called Sacred Ground for Southern Foodies by none other than the New York Times, Crook's Corner is a landmark for fine dining in Chapel Hill. Chef Bill Smith invented the recipe for shrimp and grits over a decade ago, but it has never been surpassed. Here's one reason police are so frustrated. Take a look around. Their homes on either side of the alleyway, but detectives have very few leads. The University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill is quickly becoming known for something other than its academic and on-court excellence. The university's new environmental policies are garnering attention as well. While most of these kids will never make it to the big leagues, programs like this will certainly give them a good start. Jay, I'm here at the foot of Simi Hills where the mountain lion was last seen. As you can see, a neighborhood is nearby, but it's not the big cat that has everyone worried. The face of Chapel Hill's famous Franklin Street is changing, but a few originals remain firmly glued to the area. After years of old guard boutique shops being replaced with t-shirt stores and fast food restaurants, those few originals and new small businesses are bringing retail culture back downtown. Acclaimed Chapel Hill bread fashion and home interiors designer Alexander Julian has moved his family owned store Julian's across the street. Alex Julian's father Maurice started the family business 65 years ago. Recently revamped by Julian and his wife Meg, the store now boasts classic and trendy men's and women's designer labels. Julian's for 65 years now has meant great clothes that um, make everyone feel fun, look fabulous, and have a great time. Very serviceable, um, but that you can mix and match in a lot of different ways, and that somebody's going to say, wow, you look awesome. To try to take history and move it slightly. I mean, how do you do that? Could you move the White House across the street? I don't know. But we managed, I think, successfully to move Julian's, and the response has been overwhelming. Sutton's Drugstore is another Chapel Hill institution on Franklin Street. Buoyed by its old-fashioned pharmacy with a grill and soda fountain, business has remained strong for 85 years. What's their secret? Oh, boy, here we go again. Atmosphere. Uh, you know, the, uh, the big family effect where everybody comes in and, and is part of a big family. Uh, we, we give personal service. We, uh, you know, treat everybody just like they would want to be treated at home. The new Sugarland Bakery adds an old school touch, and the site of the old Julian's will be an art gallery and antique shop called Toots and Magoo. It looks like the restoration of retail commerce to Franklin Street has made sure that Chapel Hill's calling card stays intact for years to come. This is one of the last photos taken of 15-year-old Michael Lizze, a photo his parents will treasure because it's a reminder of their son's joy just a short time before he was shot to death. I miss my son, his laughter, his, um, he was always happy, even on his, on his, on his bad days, he's always, he's always good. We're here today to announce the reward um, of $25,000. The L.A. City Council approved the reward this morning, trying to keep the case from going cold. Lizay was murdered in this alley near the 1600 block of Baxter Street in the community of Echo Park. That was more than a week ago. So far, no witnesses, few clues, and lots of frustration. We have no information at this point. Uh, we're asking for the community to help us out and give us information and assist us with this investigation. Here's one reason police are so frustrated. Take a look around. Their homes on either side of the alleyway, but detectives have very few leads. You know, folks heard things, but we still haven't been able to find anybody who saw something. It's extremely frustrating. It's an area where I live uh, just a few blocks away. We, we have uh, these acts of violence from time to time, but this is particularly tragic. 15-year-old boy just uh, weeks before his 16th birthday. For now, the family can only hope someone will come forward with information. Someone who now has 25,000 reasons to help put a killer behind bars. If you have any information about this crime, call police at 1-877-LAWFUL. From strikeouts to stolen bases, these kids are learning the basics of baseball. It's a big change for 11-year-old Genesis Garcia, who typically can't play baseball in her community because of gang violence. Well, some kids are out late at night at curfew, maybe drugs and alcohol. This keeps you away from that. Garcia is one of a hundred children taking part in the ShareFest Community Development Program, a program that takes kids from gang-ridden neighborhoods and sponsors day-long sports camps at Cal State Dominguez Hills University. Organizers say the camps are designed to give the children hope. 
the reason why we want to take them out of the neighborhood is to, to, just to expose them to what uh, a university is like uh, so they can see the facility and hopefully uh, this can be an attainable goal for them in the near future. What's the difference playing here versus where you're from? This is bigger and it's and you can run around and have fun. While most of these kids will never make it to the big leagues, programs like this will certainly give them a good start. Six-time Golden Glove winner and Dodger great Wes Parker was on hand to give the kids valuable life lessons. His primary message? Stay in school and, uh, and work hard and that they can, they can achieve anything they want to if they're willing to stick to it and believe in themselves. UNC Chapel Hill's Board of Trustees unanimously voted to install energy-saving light bulbs in all campus buildings and dormitories, use only electric-powered campus security and service vehicles, and place recycling bins next to every campus garbage can. UNC has officially jumped onto the Green Living bandwagon and hopes other universities will soon follow suit. Crook's Corner's seasonal menu features staples such as pork barbecue, fresh vegetables, and homemade sorbets. An extensive wine list also ensures that every dish is not without the perfect complement. Supper is served nightly, and a delectable brunch is also available on Sundays. For those of you who can't make it to Chapel Hill, you can pick up Bill Smith's Recipe Guide, Seasoned in the South, in bookstores nationwide.